Scripture reading is from 2 Samuel 22, verse 2 through 4. The Lord is my rock, my forgiveness, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people, you saved me. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and, and have been saved from my enemy. Next, we are going to show some videos of veterans explaining the job to the military branches. My name is Greg Mindorf. Gunner is my grandson, and he asked me to say a few words about the Army. Now, the Army is our land-based fighting force. And the main purpose is to protect the United States, its citizens, assets, and also to help protect our allies. Normally we have bases stationed pretty much all over the world so that we can react if need be. Now the main part of the fighting force is the trooper or the rifleman, I guess you would call it. But they're backed up by artillery and armor you know, that helps to help support them. Also, they have a lot of backup units, such as supply, the engineers, and also hospitals, and the cooks. <laughs> they like to eat. Now, I was a medic. I was stationed in Germany in 71 through 73, but a lot of my friends that I went in with were sent over to Vietnam, which we were fighting a war there at the time. Now, I guess what I would appreciate that you would do would be to try to remember all of these people, men and women, that joined the services to help protect your rights and your freedoms. Because a lot of them gave up a lot of time and sometimes their lives for you. All right, thank you very much and have a good day. Why did I join the Marine Corps? Well, all I have to do is listen to the lyrics of the Marine Hymn and I know exactly why. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. You see, since we were born in Tun Tavern on 10 November 1775, we fought in some strange places, like the halls of Montezuma, the Battle of Chapultepec, or the shores of Tripoli, the Battle of Dern. We fight our country's battles in the air, on land, and sea. We fought a lot of battles around the world in places like Iraq, 
Vietnam, Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, Okinawa, Korea, Afghanistan, and the Battle of Bella Wood, where we earned the nickname Tufel Hunden, Devil Dogs. First to fight for right and freedom, and to keep our honor clean. Honor. It's maintaining a high standard of integrity, responsibility, and accountability. Courage. It's doing the right thing at the right time, in the right way, and for the right reason. Commitment to God, country, Corps, and to our fellow Marines. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. See, I knew from when I was a little boy that I wanted to be a Marine. And in 23 years service around the world, I've never regretted a single day of it. And neither would you if you joined the Marines. And it's waiting for you, Semper Fidelis. My name is Steve Decker. A lot of kids know me as Mr. Decker or Master Decker with Five Rings Martial Arts. I am a Navy service uh, veteran. I was in the Navy for seven years, and the Navy is the branch of service that projects military might overseas uh, over the water. So we have carriers and destroyers and battleships and all kinds of really cool boats and planes that fly off of those boats. So military service is a very honored tradition in my family. I have three generations, both grandpas, my dad, and myself are all service members. When we think about Veterans Day, we want to say thank you to all the veterans that served and all the ones that are with us. So thank you to the veterans that served. They continue to serve in a lot of ways as teachers, as doctors, as nurses, uh, as business owners. So make sure you take the opportunity and say thank you to a veteran and thank you very much for listening. Thank you to Will Johnson for asking me to share what the role of the Air Force is and the work that we do. So the mission of the Air Force is to fly, fight, and win in airspace and cyberspace. And the oath that we all take when we when we sign up to, to be in the Air Force or the military is that we will support and defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so we do that by, by winning and being superior in those domains in airspace and cyberspace for the Air Force. So another exciting thing about the work that the Air Force does is that by doing that, we can achieve great peace throughout the world. So again, thanks for having me share what the work of the Air Force is. Hello, St. Paul Lutheran School. My name is Chrissy Kirka. I'm a retired U.S. Coast Guard Chief Petty Officer, and I'm here today to talk to you about the U.S. Coast Guard. The U.S. Coast Guard got its start back in 1790. We're comprised of three predecessor agencies, the U.S. Revenue Marine, the U.S. Lighthouse Service, and the U.S. Life Saving Service. Our core values are honor, respect, and devotion to duty. The U.S. Coast Guard is one of our country's six armed services, but we don't serve under the Department of Defense. We actually serve under the Department of Homeland Security. The U.S. Coast Guard has many major missions, one of them being military readiness. The U.S. Coast Guard has participated in every armed conflict the United States has been in. Our most famous mission probably is search and rescue. The Coast Guard on average saves 10 lives every day and conducts over 15,000 search and rescue missions a year. We also do environmental protection, oil spills, hazardous material spills. We respond in the United States and worldwide. We also conduct homeland security, which is securing our ports and waterways to help keep the United States safe. We also maintain aids to navigation. The lighthouses you see, the buoys in the water, those are the road maps or the road signs that ships use to navigate. 
we maintain those on a daily basis. And we also have big red cutters called our icebreakers that keep our Great Lakes open for maritime shipping and to also send scientists and resupply miss missions to Antarctica. Our motto is always ready, Semper Paratus. Thank you for letting me share a little bit about the Coast Guard with you today. The United States Space Force is the space service branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. It was first called the Air Force Space Command and then established as an independent military branch only 11 months ago on December 20th, 2019. <coughs> Today, space is not only essential to our way of life, it is absolutely critical to the modern way of war. GPS, ATMs, cell phones, gas pumps, <coughs> traffic lights, power grids, guiding means of surface surveillance, and ground combat control. There is no such thing as a day without space operations. We just don't see them. The United States Space Force protects America in all ways of life as the <coughs> demeaning becomes more and more contested. The Space Force imagines the unimaginable, anticipates the inconceivable, and prepares for the impossible and the most challenging environment after known. Out of Colorado Springs, the U.S. Space Force is looking toward the future and making history. The sky is not the limit. This is the way. Simple. Super. Super.
The 7th and 8th graders at St. Paul's competed in a patriotic essay writing contest through the BFW. Students wrote essays answering the question, what is patriotism to me? We have three 8th graders who will be reading their essays. What is patriotism to me? When I looked up patriotism in the Webster Dictionary, the definition is, well, that person feels for his or her country. I think patriotism means you should honor those who help your country. People like my grandfather who came to America 20 years after the pilgrims. He came here to make a better life. As a member of the Rhode Island Committee, he helped create the new idea of government separate from the church. During the Revolution War, I had a grandfather who believed so much in freedom that he went against his parents and two brothers' ideas and fought for America. Later in Wisconsin, my grandfather and his father sent, signed up to be in the Civil War on the Union side because he believed that all people should be free. My grandpa on my dad's side was in the Navy during the World War II. He was so proud of what he did. My mom's dad was in the Army during the Cold War and the Vietnam War. He retired years later from the Army. Even my aunt was in the Army. I have a cousin who was in the Marines. There are the reasons I believe in patriotism and want to do my part in small ways, like sending cards to soldiers. We do this in a 4-H club. I pay my respects by laying flowers at the cemetery. My family attends Memorial Day remembrances every year at our local memorial. When I'm older, I will want to go so I can pick someone who will do a good job running our country and help choose laws that I think are good for our community. To me, patriotism means we should remember our ancestors for what they did for the love of our country and continue to do what we can to keep it strong. What patriotism means to me. I think that patriotism means the love that one has for their country. Loving one's country does not necessarily mean having pride in thinking that you're better than anyone else. It means that you love and trust your country and that you have devotion to your country. Examples of patriotism are signing up for the military, police, firefighters, or other government officials. This could mean risking your life for your country, fighting criminals, or running into burning buildings to save people. These people fight for us and are true examples of patriotism. I think that these people are great examples if you want to learn more about how to be a patriot for our country. Patriotism is also about honoring those who have served in the past. It is honoring those who have died in the wars to protect our freedom or have kept other countries from hurting each other. This means that people have died for us, for you, and for me, so that we can live it in the world today, free and with rights. Some forms of patriotism come in smaller or local ways. We can represent our community, state, and country by using the rights we are given with the amendments in the Constitution. We can use these rights to speak out against the unfairness in our country. We can use the right of freedom of speech to have a voice to vote. There are so many ways to use your voice and your rights and to be a patriot. We can also support our country and show patriotism by volunteering. Some examples are helping people in shelters or giving food, water, and other supplies to those who have suffered a natural disaster. You could help the elderly, the poor, or the disabled. There are also so many other ways to volunteer your help and so many ways to be a patriot. This is what patriotism means to me. What is patriotism to me? To me, patriotism is showing love for your country. Patriotism is not trying to erase all the bad things that happen in our country, because we can't. Patriotism is helping our country 
Kagan's cousin. I served in the Army Infantry from 1999 to the year 2001, and then I served another 10 years in the Army National Guard. I joined the Army for a few different reasons. One of the reasons was that I always wanted to serve my country, and I thought by joining the Army that was one of the best ways to do it. Another reason was I had various family, family members that served, such as aunts, uncles, grandparents, and a brother that had all served. I wanted to be a part of that family tradition and carry on that family legacy. One of my favorite things about being in the Army was the camaraderie and the sense of brotherhood that you had with the people that you served with. I was on two deployments to the Middle East, one to Kuwait and another to Iraq. I had also served in various other missions. I was part of a, a mission that built a joint training base in Latvia. I also worked on the border wall on the Arizona border and a humanitarian mission in the Dominican Republic. As a veteran, I would like to say thank you for your support and happy Veterans Day to all those that have served. And here's a picture of me from one of my deployments. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jen and I was born and raised in Plainfield, Wisconsin and I went to Tri-County and as a junior in high school I was kind of undecided as what my career path would be and I was, I was aware that my parents didn't have a lot of extra money to pay for college so when an Air Force recruiter called me it was kind of spontaneous and I said sure sign me up. So. I did six years as a signals intelligence analyst and it's one of those if I told you I'd have to kill you sort of gigs and I did a lot with space and satellites um, and a lot of buildings with no windows but it was cool and at the time when I joined I did it you know because I didn't really have anything else um, exciting and I wanted to get out and experience the world so I have done just that. Um, after my six years as a staff sergeant, I was married to also an Air Force um, guy and we just retired after 21 years of service. Um, he was a cop, so we've spent a lot of time 
moving around and I've lived in Texas and England and California and Washington DC and Georgia and the St. Louis area. So um, for me, Veterans Day is a chance for everyone to kind of, you know, learn something about our military and I am always willing to share the excitement that it's brought our family and the opportunities we've had and I could not be more thankful for support from everyone and kids like you. So thank you and happy Veterans Day. As a veteran, I am proud to have followed in the footsteps of my father and his brothers, doing what I could to take care of my fellow soldiers. I worked in the medical field and the things that I saw were not pleasant. But at least I was able to give some hope and some relief to many of the soldiers I had care of. I am thankful to live in a country that allows us to serve at will, that allows us to have the freedoms we have, that allows us to travel where we want to, when we want to, which is not available in many other countries. In this crazy time that we live in, we need to remember just how blessed we are. Outside of the chapel, you will see the fallen soldier table set up. It is a memorial commonly set up for military dining facilities and is traditionally part of military dining ceremonies and service halls. It originated during the time of the Vietnam War to remember those who were missing in action and those prisoners of war. The fifth graders are now going to explain each setting on the table. The table represents the honor of our fallen soldiers or those who are missing. The table is small because it shows one soldier, so soldier's only battle against. The tablecloth is white to represent a soldier's peer or when he answers his country's call to duty. The setting represents your wish that the fallen man and woman of the armed forces could be told about. The black napkin represents sadness. The vase is tied with the yellow ribbon for the greatness, waiting for those serving God, as we pray that they are watched over and kept close to God. Single red is placed in the vase, reminds us of the lives of each of our fallen soldiers and the friends and loved ones this, with the soldier who cut their face. A slice of water is to remind us of the bitter fate of those who are gone. The candle stands tall for the blood the soldier lost in the light of hope. The chair is empty because they are no longer with us. Even though I'm a veteran, I tend to think about Veterans Day in relationship to others. To me, it's about those people who were before me and even some during my time who served and may have thought different about their life than I did. And to me, Veterans Day is 
really honoring people who went out of their way to do sometimes very dangerous things, sometimes boring things, sometimes fun things, but they always did it with the thought that I'm doing it for others, doing it for you. And that's what I think about Veterans Day, is thank goodness all those people all these years have gone out of their way to just do things for us. It's kind of like wearing a mask today in the pandemic. We don't really do it to protect ourselves so much, but to protect our friends and neighbors. Darn masks are uncomfortable, aren't they? But we go ahead and wear them because we don't want to have any harm come to our loved ones, our friends, and our neighbors. And that's what a veteran does. He wears a uniform. He goes where he needs to go in the world to protect you. So when Veterans Day comes, just think of those guys. Hi there. My name is Master Sergeant Tyler Wilkins of the United States Air Force. I'm currently serving at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. I've been serving in the Air Force for about 12 years now. I've previously served in multiple states and multiple countries all over the world. Uh, too many to name off, but uh, the reason I'm making this video is Miss Kiggins has actually asked me to make a short video on what Veterans Day means to me. Um, I think the biggest thing to remember about Veterans Day is uh, just to take the time to thank any service men and women that you know. Um, I know when I hear it, uh, I appreciate it very, very much. And it makes all this time that I've given away from my family and friends back home in Wisconsin uh, feel somewhat worth it. Um, makes us feel appreciated and happy to be doing what we're doing. And it doesn't matter what age the person that's saying it is, uh, just taking the time to stop us and say thank you for your service and we appreciate what you do makes all the difference in the world. And also, not just members of the military that are currently serving, but members that have served in the past and also taking some time to reflect on those veterans who have sacrificed a lot more than just time away from families um, by serving in the military. Um, taking a little time to think about them, maybe saying a little prayer and thanking them for what they've done for our country as well. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Y'all behave, take care of yourselves, and God bless. My dad, David Herman, joined the Army National Guard in June of 2008. He went to basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. His MOS, or his job, was a petroleum supply specialist, but when he deployed to Iraq, he was a rear gunner and did convoy security. That means he rode in the last vehicle of the convoy and protected all the ones traveling ahead of him. He drove 6,000 miles. He served in Operation Iraq Freedom and Operation New Dawn. My dad died in April from an undiagnosed heart condition believed to be tied to his service in Iraq. His service taught me to persevere that if you make it through the pain, it will be all the more worth it in the end. He taught me that if you work hard and work routinely, you'll gain respect from your elders. Anybody who knew him could say that he was an amazing, hilarious, and dedicated man. My dad was a soldier in the U.S. Army and fought in Iraq. His job in the Army was to poke his head out of a big truck and shoot a big gun. My dad loved to laugh and he loved to joke around. A story of my dad in the army and a memory of the age. <clears throat> One of my favorite memories with my dad was at the father-daughter dance. 
We both had a good time, and after that we went and got dinner. It was one of the best nights of my life by Wendy. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you, Dad, for serving our country. In the world. Thank you, veterans, for serving for us. Thank you, veterans, for serving and protecting our country. Thank you, Dad, for serving in the Air Force. Thank you for your service. Thank you, veterans. Thank you, veterans. Thank you for our, for the service to our country. Thank you for our, your service in the military and keeping us safe during the wars. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you to the veterans. Thank you all the veterans for all you do for this country and sacrificing so much time out of your lives. Thank you. Thank you veterans for serving our country and taking so much time away from your families. Thank you to the veterans. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service and keeping our country safe. Thank you for helping our country. A thank you to all of you who took time out of your day to watch our Veterans Day program. And most importantly, thank you to all of our veterans who served or are currently serving in the armed forces. We cannot thank you enough. Also, a special thank you to our former student, Jacob Zurich, who put this video together for us. Happy Veterans Day.